Hello again. In this video, I'm going to talk briefly about the modern model of the atom and subatomic particles. This should be a review of your previous chemistry course, but I think it's useful to just touch on these points to refresh your memory. First of all, uh, the concept of the atom has been around for a long time. It was uh, proposed by ancient Greek philosophers Democritus and Leucippus in the 400s BC, the 5th century BC. But in the modern era, uh, the first scientist to propose the model and to back it up with some experimental data was John Dalton, who put together five theorems as part of his uh, atomic model. But the fundamental statement of his uh, model was uh, that all matter is composed of tiny, indivisible particles called atoms. And as a nod to the ancient Greek philosophers who first proposed this concept, he chose their name for them. Atomos in Greek means not divisible. So, just to reiterate, an atom is the smallest quantity of matter that still retains the properties of matter. Okay, an element is a substance that cannot be broken down into simpler chemical substances by any chemical or physical means. So we know that we have a periodic table of the elements, and we talked about that in a previous chapter. Just want to emphasize, we do have uh, particles that are smaller than atoms and that are more fundamental than elements but they are not considered to be chemical substances. So for example, protons, neutrons, electrons, quarks, and so forth, they are not considered to be chemical substances. So let's talk about these subatomic particles, the particles that are subatomic, smaller than the atom, that make up the atom. We're gonna make a simplified sketch of a carbon atom. Just as a reminder, we have a nucleus, and I'm going to draw it really, really large here. This is the nucleus. And there are many ways, many models, uh, ways to sketch an atom. But I'm going to just draw a few of the electronic orbitals around this nucleus. And you may recall that protons and neutrons are going in the nucleus and electrons are in orbitals outside of the nucleus. If it's a carbon atom and we look on our periodic table, we will see that the carbon has an atomic number of six. That number six right there, that number six right there, shows us that this, the atomic number for carbon is six and that is how many protons there are in the nucleus of a carbon atom. So we're going to put six protons in here. I'm going to designate a proton with just a lowercase p, and I'm going to put a positive charge on each one of those because protons are positively charged. And there we go. We have six protons down in a carbon atom, right? Remember, this is carbon. Now, the most common isotope of carbon that is, the most common carbon atom has not only six protons in its nucleus, but it also has six neutrons. And neutrons are neutral. So I'm going to just draw six neutral neutrons, and in lowercase n, with a zero on it, showing that it has a zero charge. So that's a simplified, conceptualized idea of the way that a carbon atom might look. Now, in a neutral atom, all of its positive charges from the protons must be balanced out by negative charges from the electrons. So I must have, if I have six protons, then I must have six electrons around it. And I'm just gonna put them in two of them here. We draw electrons very often as lowercase e with a negative charge. I'm gonna put two of them in the first one, little orbital there, two of them in the next one, and two of them in that third one. And again, I'm, we're going to talk about why I've drawn them this way, but for now I'm just going to draw them that way and 
and we'll use that as our simplified sketch. So this is the most common isotope of a carbon atom. It's, it's an isotope that has six neutrons in its nucleus. Six protons, because all carbons have six protons. And if it's a neutral atom, it must have six electrons as well. So let's fill in some gaps here. The nucleus contains, always contains protons, and it usually contains neutrons. Filling in some other gaps. The number of what identifies the identity of the element? The number of protons. So for example, if it has, let's take a look at our periodic table, if it has five protons in its nucleus, it is defined as a boron atom. If it has eight protons in its nucleus, it is defined as an oxygen atom. If it has 92 protons in its nucleus, it is defined as a uranium atom. So the number of protons in the nucleus define the identity of the element. And that number is also called the element's atomic number. And that atomic number is often abbreviated Z. All right, next, we know that protons carry a positive charge. Protons are positively charged. And neutrons are neutral. They are not charged, or they have zero charge. OK, next, we have the number of protons and neutrons. That is, the number of protons plus neutrons in the nucleus of an element de determines its mass. And you can see that the mass of the protons, it's very small. But if you have six of those, you can have six times that mass in protons. The mass of a neutron is slightly larger than that. And so you'll have uh, some mass in the nucleus of an atom. Well, now, what about the electrons? Don't they have mass? Yes, they do. And these electrons that are distributed around the nucleus of an atom, they do have mass. But notice what their mass is. It's 9.109 times 10 to the negative 28 grams compared to 10 to the negative 24 grams. So a proton is about a thousand times more massive than an electron. So yes, electrons do contribute mass to an atom, but they contribute very, very little mass compared to protons and neutrons. So which is more massive, an electron or proton? A proton by about a thousand times. Electrons carry what charge? Electrons are negatively charged. And we know that in a neutral atom, the number of electrons and protons is equal.